on the local edition. We got some local history to talk about, and maybe you want to beat the summer heat. How about a trip to the Arctic without even leaving the Radio Catskill listening area? Because this Thursday, Sullivan County Museum and the Frederick Cook Society, they're hosting a talk on the explorer photographer, Dr. Frederick Cook. He was a doctor and Arctic explorer, born here in Sullivan County in 1865, claimed to first reach the North Pole in 1908. That's a year before uh, Peary's claim to the North Pole. And uh, also about 18 years before the first undisputed expedition to the North Pole. On the phone to tell us more about the current ex- exhibit on Cook's photography and the talk that's happening coming up on July 21st, Sullivan County History Museum. Carol Smith is on the phone with us. Hello, Carol. Welcome to the program. Hi, Jason. Thanks for having me. Sounds like um, you know a lot about Cook already. Well, it's the sort of thing, I, you know, when you grow up in the area, you hear about this, but it, but then you, you lose the details. So I just did some quick, you know, researching at Wikipedia. <laughs> I, there was a really interesting um, article from Smithsonian from about uh, 13 years ago that was uh, – that, that said that, you know, that Cook got started in exploring because when he was 25, his wife and child uh, died in childbirth, and he was distraught till he, he turned to exploration. Yeah, and that's for anybody who wants a really good, quick background, just Google Frederick Cook and Smithsonian article, and that really is the sort of the quintessential summation of of his life, and it's done really by somebody who knew very well all of the different expeditions he went on and all of the controversy that he suffered in his life. So that that's a great article. But um, I guess, you know, first I do want to say that the museum house for the exhibition, and um, there's more than 50 photographs from between 1890 and 1908, um, everything from ships to icebergs to Inuits, and um, and then some personal photos of Cooks as well. Um, but the talk I'm going to give my my kind of first public talk at six o'clock about the exhibition, how it came to be, um, how I got involved in the Cook Society, which is a, a cool story as well. And um, you know, just just a little bit about you know why this is such an extraordinary collection of photography and why. Frederick Cook um, was such an extraordinary man. Yeah, let's let's talk about the photos too, because I mean, this is this is somebody who who went on these expeditions, brought back the, these photographs, and I was curious where these photographs came from. But it sounds like they they come from right here in Sullivan County. Well, the the collection and it, it all started. The author Julian Sancton sent a letter to the Cook Society asking permission to use some of the photographs in a book he was writing about the Belgica, and I got that letter. And at that point, I wasn't involved, but it it got me to start looking at the photos, which are primarily housed in the Library of Congress and also at the Ohio State University. And in order for an author to use the photos, they need permission from the Cook Society. So we've had a number of people reach out to us over the years, but, but Julian, this is the first new book about Cook's role on the Belgica and about that particular adventure, which is an extraordinary story. So so that got me looking at the photos, and, and I realized the Cook Society owned a collection of two or three hundred that I found in the basement, and they were mostly five-by-seven prints, negatives, and positives, and then a lot of stray images that were in files and all over the place downstairs. And then I began to reach out to the, you know, to the big guys and, and gathered high-res digital images. So we we collected uh, probably 400 images from Dr. Cook's travels and began to select which ones to print and which ones to frame, and that's that's how it all began. But, you know, as an artist, I was just really blown away by the sensitivity and the composition and the the sort of the light in his photos. It's very unusual, the light in the Arctic and the Antarctic. It's, It's nothing like you see here. So that's what that's what drove me to to his work, and then I began to read his books. And of course, he's also a great writer. And um, we owned, you know, several hundred copies of the four books he wrote, and they're just absolutely fascinating. So that's that's how it all began. 
And it's interesting to hear that, like, with, you know, Sullivan County Museum, with all the historical angles of this and something that, you know, is also a technical pursuit, a historical pursuit and a scientific one, that there's that there's actual real aesthetic value to this artistic value to just seeing these photos. Yeah, that, and that's exactly right. One of the things that I noted and and I did a lot of research is that his work had never been exhibited as fine art. It has always been exhibited in periodicals and books and scientific journals and research um, pamphlets and things like that. But nobody had ever put together an exhibition just from a fine art point of view. And that's, that's what I did because that's my background. I'm not a historian. I'm not a, I'm not a polar historian or by any stretch of the imagination, although I'm learning quite a bit and, uh, it's just it's it's a very aesthetically pleasing batch of photography and the the most striking image is the one he took of the Belgica where it was it was probably 20 below 0 and he had to stand for an hour and a half outside with this brownie camera and it, you know the exposure was an hour and a half to get a shot in the dark night of the Arctic. It was absolutely an incredible shot. Wow. Wow. And you say you have all the, these hundreds of photos. Are they from different, uh, I mean, the ones in this exhibit are probably going to be from this expedition, but with all of those photos, you have photos from other ex expeditions. Yeah, we, we, it's, it's from all over. And, and me personally, I'm still straightening out which images are from which expedition. I really selected the work, from a visual art perspective and and I'm hoping as I go forward people will step up and help me with the scholarly parts of the show there's there's a tremendous amount of information that I don't have yet and I don't know a lot of the photos came to us and they were just they were scratched and dirty and and Aldo cleaned them up he took a lot of the rips out and the tape marks but I chose them just because they're beautiful. And, um, you know, so it's kind of like working backwards. Now I have to plug in the history. Wow. That's well, and, and that's great with like everything that, that you've done in life and, um, you know, and, and all the experience that you have, like with art and music, um, now, like, it's just great that you, you're kind of being thrust in the position of learning like a whole new area of stuff that you probably never imagined you'd be, uh, you know, exploring the Arctic in this way. No, that's exactly right. It's if anyone had told me three years ago, I would have gone down this rabbit hole head first and just be kind of overwhelmed by this man's life and and his character as well. He, you know, he just suffered tremendous injustice and yet in the face of it all, you know, he remained true to his claim that he got to the pole. He was a good person. He didn't make it up and he was brutally brutally attacked by the media. And and that's, you know, a huge part of the story. I just met a new author who came in about two weeks ago, who is now writing a book on Frederick Cook based on the press that was written in New York, which was which created one of the largest controversies in the world at the time. So this is going to be a fascinating book. Um, this guy's name is Daryl Hartman, and he will be speaking at the museum next month, August 18th, uh, same time, 6 o'clock. And and how long is this exhibit of photos going to be up at the museum? Uh, at least through the first of December. We we haven't really picked an end date, and I and I hope to add to the show as we go. I have a lot more work to do. Right. I didn't I didn't frame and print nearly as many as I would have liked to. Um, I ran out of time and and everything but well, there's, great that, there's so the, much more work to do the photos will be there as you get like additional speakers like the the one is coming next month but just to remind folks again before we go you you yourself are, are giving your first ever talk on this subject mm -hmm. and, and the whole story of of how this came to be is, is we're getting hints of that how this exhibit came to be is is pretty interesting too um and that's happening thursday evening just one more time details uh for folks who might be interested in yep. going the Sullivan County Museum, 265 Main Street in Hurleyville. Uh, the entire town has a, a mini festival from 4 to 7. There's going to be food trucks and things for kids and scavenger hunts. And um, my talk will be at 6 o'clock. 
and the whole thing is free. There's just going to be a lot of activity downtown. So, you know, anybody that wants to come do something different, Hurleyville will be hopping. Okay. Well, uh, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, Carol Smith, emerging polar historian. Thank you for talking to us tonight. All right. All right. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it.